Translator, underscore Leo, underscore Editor, Carisu. Trying to escape? Anjali retrieved the black smoke and scanned the blue light dots. Power of time, the power of time. He was happy with what he'd just found. The power of time was one of the several things that could extend the effect of the mark on his body. Anjali had a general idea of what an ancestor was, but he had no idea how to become one. Before he explored the intestine of the world, he thought that he could become an ancestor if he wanted. However, the truth was quite depressing. Anjali assumed that he needed to learn to control the power of time if he wanted to become an ancestor. His sight quickly moved to the teleporting snake. If that's the case, you shall not escape. His body disappeared into a ball of dark flames. The next time he appeared, he was only around 10 meters away from the snake. The snake was surprised, its body shrank again and turned into the size of a fist. Chi. The snake flew into the sky with the speed of lightning, leaving a blue trail behind. Anjali teleported a couple more times, but it seemed like the snake was moving faster than him. His brow furrowed, and he boosted his speed again by releasing some red light. He left a red trail behind. It felt like there was a red string chasing after a blue string. They went through the red barrier and disappeared into the sky. Ramsoda School The whole school was protected by a translucent ball-shaped barrier. There were apprentices and wizards standing on the balconies, streets, empty grounds, and behind the windows. There were hundreds of people in the school. They were all staring at the barrier, holding their breaths. The black barrier was shaking due to the red light outside. It was cracking. The cracked areas were quickly fixed by the runes released by the wizards inside the barrier. This situation had lasted for more than 10 minutes. Finally, a blue ray and a red ray passed by. The dark clouds disappeared, and the red light started fading away. The black barrier was no longer shaking and quickly stabilized. The wizards inside the barrier started cheering. The important members of the school floated in the sky and sighed with relief. They had some trouble keeping the barrier up. What just happened? I heard that the shadow waves from the shadow ball had already ended. I don't know. Maybe it's due to some strange energy interruptions. It could be the world stones. Master said, you came back to the school not so long ago and you've explored the central continent. Do you know what the red light is? An elder looked at a wizard named Sid. It's too far from us, I can't really identify it. Also, our defensive barrier blocked all the energy movement and sound. I need to move closer to the red light if I want to collect more information. Sid shook his head. He looked young. The promotion event will be held with the anniversary event of the school. We're all formal wizards who graduated from the school. Someone must know what just happened. The president and the vice president of the school were an old man with two heads. The head on the left was male, and the head on the right was a female. They both had white messy hair. They heard those words and glanced at other wizards. There were white robes, red robes, and black robes that varied in gender. They were all hiding their true power. A female red robe stepped forward and spoke in a deep tone after she noticed that the presidents were glancing at them. I think the red light was caused by a battle between two strong wizards. The dark clouds and the red light were probably the physical forms of their energy waves. They set up the red barrier so that we don't get caught in the middle of their battle. It should have been fine, even if we didn't have the black barrier up. They didn't want to kill innocent people, I guess. Maybe we should even try and find the one who set up the red barrier. He might be interested in our school, a chubby man with a pair of glasses added. The male head nodded, but the female head had her brow furrowed as she looked at the other head. Andy, we shouldn't approach a strong being like that for no reason because things could get ugly if we make the wrong decision. You're right. What should we do then? The male head was probably thinking the same thing. We should leave them alone. They are both stronger than us. If we approach only one of them, the other one might get angry and attack our school. You're correct. We should just mind our own business. There are still graduated students who are heading back to the school. The female head sighed. I hope they were not caught in the fight. She did not finish her words, but people all knew what she was implying. The two wizards were stronger than all of the wizards in the school. In a forest by Ramsoda, three caravans were stuck on a narrow path. They were so scared that they decided not to advance. 
There was a clear line about 10 meters in front of them that separated them from the battlefield. The area ahead was burnt black, but the area behind the line was still the same as before, vibrant trees, green grass, and rich soil. There were also birds and squirrels around. Although the dark clouds and the red light had completely disappeared, the three caravans were not sure if they should advance or not. The man with sharp ears stood in front of the burnt land and overlooked the area. Everything was burnt black in his sight, and it almost felt like there was no living being around. This area was right below the red light. I guess everything that was touched by the red light was burnt black. Such terrifying power, he spoke in a low voice. We're lucky that we get to see a scene like this. The two black robes standing next to him nodded and agreed. I wonder if the school was impacted by the battle, one of them suddenly said. Their expressions changed after hearing these words. We need to find it out, someone said. There was no cloud in the clear blue sky. A blue light ball soared through the air like a meteor, followed by a similar red meteor. In the forest below, there was a brown monkey with a red face looking for fruits on a tree. The monkey saw the two meteors and started waving its hands at them. It then noticed that the red meteor was actually a human being in a light ball and was so scared that it almost fell off the tree. The monkey stabilized its body by grabbing the branch using its tail. Angeli was the red meteor. He had a serious expression on the face. He had been chasing the traitor of Axis of Time for more than half an hour, but he failed to close the gap between them. Every time he moved closer to the blue meteor, it would increase its speed. He knew that it was the power of time, however, there was nothing he could do. If it was the power of dimension, Angeli could rely on the scorpion woman's bloodline power, but he knew nothing about the power of time. This will never end, but it's a good thing for me. I'm flying at my maximum speed and I can use the extra energy in my body. I'll see how long he can last. I'm sure that he can't use the power of time forever. Angeli had so much energy that he did not even care. The traitor was not an ancestor, but he had the ability to use the power of time to a certain level. Angeli was not sure if he could find someone else like that in the future, so he decided to capture him. He wanted to learn the secret of time and combine the technique with the power of dimension. Angeli was certain that the study would help him become an ancestor. After making up his mind, he released some more red light and his speed increased slightly again. The blue meteor was scared and teleported again using the power of time. The blue light around the meteor finally started fading after it teleported. Angeli sneered and increased his speed again. He finally got closer to the man. Somewhere deep in the gem sea. Deep in the sea, there was a large black altar on the gray ground, and there was no living being or grass around. The black altar was formed by three triangular objects which surrounded a small tower in the center. There were countless merfolk standing around the altar. Their ears looked like fins, and there were tiny scales on their bodies. Also, there was no hair on their heads. The merfolk were singing something with their heads lowered. There were thin black strings coming out of their bodies. There were three weapons in the center of the altar, a red trident, a blue scimitar, and a black dagger. All three weapons were glowing. It's done. A deep voice echoed in the void. A dark hole appeared above the weapon slowly. The hole shrank and expanded. It felt like it could disappear at any time. Suddenly, the glow around the weapons became intense, and the dark hole quickly expanded. So, this is the wizard world? A humongous blue claw covered in black scales reached out of the hole. Weak. Such a weak realm. A terrifying snake head appeared and glanced at the merfolk wizards. The strongest wizard here is a rank four wizard. So weak. Hain, you can leave if you don't want to go to the wizard world. Another voice echoed in the void. The snake sneered. What can you find in a weak realm like this? However, there is fresh meat here. Also, if I leave just because you asked me to, it'll make me uncomfortable. The other voice sneered as well. Whatever, you know what you need to do. I'll give you five months to kill all the strong wizards here so that no one can block our dimension tunnel. Don't worry. I only need one month for a weak realm like this. The snake moved out of the dark hole. It looked like an enormous lizard with a long tail as it stopped in front of the altar quietly. 
The snake was about 20 meters long, and there were many bone spikes on its body, shaking as its body moved. Also, the bone spikes were coated with a glowing purple substance. Do whatever you want, but don't forget your mission. Enough, you can leave now. The snake opened its mouth and used its long tongue to grab a merfolk wizard. It threw the wizard into its mouth and started chewing. The fresh blood leaking out of its mouth quickly disappeared into the water. Translator, underscore Leo underscore editor, Karisu. Somewhere in the gem sea. A blue ray and a red ray soared through blue sky like lightning. Angeli's body was surrounded with red light and there were blue light dots dancing around his right hand. It almost looked like the dancing light dots were alive. He acquired those light dots from the traitor of Axis of Time. They were the power of time. You're not going to run forever. There was a smile on Angeli's face. You're worried that I'm going to kill you, right? However, that may not be the case. You just need to promise me one thing and we can work together. The blue ray twitched slightly and a tired voice responded, What do you want? He barely had any choice. If he had not underestimated Angeli's power, none of this would have happened. The only thing he wanted was the key, but he made the wrong choice. I have a research project that needs some help. You just need to follow my orders and I'll let this one slide. Angeli responded, You and I are just strangers. There's a chance that we may even become friends during the research. The research will not hurt you and it might even increase your power. It's a win-win situation. The man's body was surrounded by blue light. His body was translucent, but it slowly liquefied. It seemed like he had already used most of his energy. The man heard Angeli's word and hesitated. He was not sure if Angeli was lying or not. After the experiment he conducted in Axis of Time, he started to having trouble thinking sometimes. When he tried his best to focus, the power of time slowly created a scene in his sight. The scene was displayed on numerous black and white paintings. The man was about to accept Angeli's offer, however, he suddenly heard himself screaming in pain. He felt like he was seeing the future. He was imprisoned in a small cell and his head was dissected. A man in a black robe was doing something to his brain. The terrifying scene made his body tremble. He did not respond to Angeli's words and suddenly increased his speed again. He ignored all of Angeli's following persuasion attempts. Angeli listed a lot of convincing reasons, but the man did not respond at all. He was getting a bit impatient. Angeli's expression slowly turned cold, and he was no longer speaking in a gentle tone. So... It seems like you've made your choice, Angeli spoke in a cold tone. The man still remained silent. He was just flying. Angeli stopped talking and started chasing after the man again. They were both flying over the gem sea. Although the man had good stamina, Angeli could feel that the man's condition was getting worse and worse. However, he still had a lot of extra energy in his body. He had been chasing the man for three days, and he was confident that he could fly for months without running out of energy. On a random island in the Gem Sea, the white island looked like a humongous caterpillar that was lying on the surface of the sea. There were some buildings and coconut trees on the island. The humans here had brown skin. They were maintaining their farms. Some of them were just carrying boxes or washing clothes. Suddenly, they all raised their heads and looked at the area above the island. There were more than 10 wizards in blue robes floating in the air. They were the ones who owned this island. They were from a wizard organization called the Blue Batch. The oldest wizard had white hair and his skin was dry. The youngest wizard was around 20 years old. They were led by an old man with his eyes covered by a piece of black cloth. The old man was in front of the other wizards. He looked a bit anxious. He was holding a golden ring engraved with a lot of red floral patterns in his hand. Everyone, send all your energy to me when there's a problem. I'll gather the energy using the sea ring, the old man ordered. The rest of the wizards all had serious expressions on their faces. The atmosphere was so heavy that they were having trouble breathing. Blue Badge was a wizard organization that became strong recently. Although there were many wizards in the organization, it was not the strongest one on the West Coast. Most of the wizards became formal wizards not so long ago. Their leader, the old man, was the only wizard that lived for over 300 years, but he'd only reached the gas stage. Although the leader was weak, 
he was good at collecting valuable information. The old man looked at the surface of the sea anxiously. His eyes were not blinking at all. The merfolk will perform a certain ritual every several years. They will summon sea monsters to help them establish their position in the sea. We decided to move from the land to the island. We already expected this to happen. However, it seems like the monster they summon this time is out of control. The monster is called Stan. He already destroyed several islands. Some of the small wizard organizations were also caught in the incident, and the monster has already killed thousands of people. I heard that the monsters already ate many formal wizards. Are you sure our method will work? One of the young wizards looked worried. We don't have many choices. This is our only chance. The monsters summoned by the merfolk have a habit. If they fail to destroy an island the first time they invade it, they will not attack the island again. We just need to survive the first invasion. But Grandpa, why don't we head back to the land? We can come back to the island after the monster leaves, a girl with blue hair wondered. She was the granddaughter of the old man. She just became a rank three apprentice not so long ago. She was talented and young. Also, she had the bloodline of Siren in her body. The girl was loved by the apprentices and wizards in the organization. She was like a star of this island. People with certain bloodlines would have a much higher chance to become formal wizards than others. People all thought that she would become a high rank wizard sooner or later, so the organization spent a lot of resources on her. She was the hope of the organization. I want to return to the land, but we don't have enough time. We just received the information that the monster will come today, so we have to face it, the old man sighed. We have the sea ring, the legendary ring that was used by the sea giants. Sea giants killed countless sea monsters. We should be fine, the girl said. The other wizards agreed with her because the ring was the only reason why they chose to stay. Another wizard was about to say something else, but he did not get the chance. It's here. The old man's expression changed. Get ready, everyone, he shouted, his voice echoing over the island. The wizards behind him quickly raised their right hands, and light that varied in color flashed in the air. The old man slowly raised the golden ring. Bam. The ring was blown away by a ray of water that had the speed of an arrow before it was activated. The water arrows pierced through two wizards that stood too close to the old man. There was blood spurting out of their wounds. The white barriers around their bodies did nothing. They could not believe what had just happened while falling to the sea. A humongous blue snake appeared on the water. It grabbed the two dead wizards using its claws and threw them into its mouth. Ah! The people on the island started screaming, all trying their best to hide. The situation got ugly quickly. The apprentices consumed the prepared potions and turned their bodies invisible. Some of them rushed into the basements. There were also people trying to climb trees. Two of the wizards were killed before the ring was activated, however, they were not surprised. They quickly regrouped and started casting their spells. They also summoned fire elementals and fire demons. Several wizards aimed at the snake and raised their wands. A couple of black runes flashed on the snake's body. The runes looked like insects. They were chewing the snake's flesh. It was a damage spell casted by the wizards. Following the first spells, several fireballs appeared in the sky and started flying at the snake. The snake finished two wizards, but it was not prepared for the attacks. The fireballs all landed on its body accurately. Chi. The scales on the snake's body stood up and blocked all the spells. Its body was not damaged at all. Huh, that's all you can do? Do you really think such weak spells can damage me? The snake opened its mouth and released hundreds of red tongues that looked like tentacles, which then tried to grab the people on the island and the wizards in the sky. The apprentices were caught by the tentacles, and the snake ate them like snacks. Two of the wizards were also hit by the tentacles. They screamed and cast two more fireballs on their own bodies. They would rather die than be swallowed by the snake. The old wizard found the ring and tried to activate it. However, the golden ring did not do anything. They finally realized why the big organizations were still trying to figure out a plan to handle this monster. The situation was completely different this time. There were some purple dots on the golden ring. It seemed like the ring was already polluted. That's how merfolk control the sea. There was desperation in the old wizard's eyes. 
he did not communicate with other wizard organizations. Otherwise, he would know that the Wizard Alliance and the Six Ring High Tower already sent their armies to help the small organizations, but all failed. The wizard organizations of the land could not do anything to this monster. They had to wait for the ritual to lose its power so that the sea monster would leave on its own. They made the decision based on their past experiences. Translator, underscore Leo, underscore editor, Karisu. The sea snake named Stan climbed up the island and opened his mouth. He was laughing like crazy while slaughtering the residents of the island. He was chewing the human beings like bubble gum. Run. Vela, a wizard, pushed his granddaughter towards the land. He released an unbelievably strong force. It almost looked like the girl was flying in the sky like a rocket. Grandpa, let's leave together. The girl was surprised. She tried to return to the old man, but there was nothing she could do. The old man and the other wizards watched the girl fly in the sky. Master, you should leave. We'll try and stop the snake. Yeah. We'd never become formal wizards without you, master. It's time for us to pay you back. As long as Vela is alive, we still have. Suddenly, they stopped talking. The wizards watched Vela's body being stopped by a thin blue barrier. It looked like the barrier was created by water. They could see that there were small sea snakes moving in the fluid. Sea snake, Stan. The old man's voice was trembling. He closed his eyes slowly and realized that Stan had put up the barrier to stop them from escaping. They were all trapped inside the barrier. Desperation filled up the wizard's eyes. Stan watched the scene and laughed. You have nowhere to go. Do you know why we come back to slaughter you every once in a while? You're like pigs to us. We're here just to eat. That's the fate of the creatures in a weak realm like this. Suddenly, a red ray and a blue ray appeared outside the water barrier. They came from the side of the island, and it seemed like the blue ray noticed the situation. It flew to the island, and the red ray followed after it. The energy waves released by the blue ray were identical to the energy waves released by the merfolk for some reason. Stan noticed the two rays and started laughing again. Another piece of meat. This one is chasing after a merfolk, huh? Stan teleported into the sky and separated the red ray and the blue ray. Ah. Uh, Fresh meat. Stan was excited after checking the situation. Fool. The red ray was blocked for a second and was enraged. A humongous black claw appeared in the sky and slapped the sea monster hard. Bam. Stan was slapped by the claw like a fly. He fell into the sea and did not come back. The giant claw released some terrifying dark smoke and the space around the cloud twisted. There were souls screaming and groaning in the dark smoke. People in the area were all scared by the horrifying sounds they heard. The dark claw disappeared into the sky after Stan was blown away. The red ray started chasing after the blue ray again. The wizards and apprentices were surprised by what just happened. They just stood there and watched the red ray and the blue ray leave the sky. The two rays quickly disappeared into the air. Where's the monster? Someone questioned. A wizard who survived the attack flew to the area where the monster fell into the sea. He found a part of the monster's body. There was still blood spurting out of it. It ran away. The wizard shouted. He was so surprised that he could not believe what just happened. The monster is gone. The others heard those words and quickly moved to him. They hesitated for a second and picked up the body part of the monster. They could not believe that the monster was gone, but they were happy that someone took the monster out. The monster is gone. We survived. They survivors by the beach started cheering. Other people started cheering as well after they heard the noise. The old man and his students were also surprised. They felt relieved and that their burden was gone. The wizard sighed with mixed emotions after they picked up the monster's body part and confirmed that the monster was gone. Vela flew back to the island and jumped into her grandpa's arms. She was crying like crazy. Don't worry, girl, we're safe now. The old man patted the girl's back and looked at where the two rays disappeared. The master that passed by saved us. We should remember that. I hope we have a chance to pay him back. The girl leaned to the side and looked at the sky as well. She was flying in the sky and had the chance to see the man inside the red light. I doubt he would visit this area again. He's so strong that it almost felt like he doesn't belong to this world. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. Someone, 
Help me. Boston, anger, ram, someone. Ah. The monster was screaming in pain while saying random words. The sea monster lost one eye and one foot. Its tail was severely wounded, and its body was covered in sticky blood. The monster was screaming like a crying kid. The monster was in so much pain that if there was anyone around, he would feel sad for this humongous snake. Sadly, the monster was the only one here. There was black smoke coming out of the wounds on his body. The black smoke formed ghost masks, which were chewing the snake's flesh. They were the reason why the wounds were not healing. Oh, my lord. Anger. U F asterisk king B asterisk T C H. You told me that this was a weak realm and said that no one here could damage me. U F asterisk king son of A B asterisk T C H. Anger. All your family members shall die in pain. Ah. Uh, someone help me. Mom. The snake was screaming and crying. It sounded like the monster was about to collapse. Finally, the snake noticed that something was in front of him. He saw that a shark was approaching him slowly using the last eye he had. The shark had five mouths. The sharp teeth in its mouths looked unorganized. It almost felt like that the shark's teeth were taken from someone else. The snake saw the shark and charged toward it like crazy. Ram, help me. The shark saw the snake as well, but it looked surprised. Stan, what happened to you? Chi, the blue ray and the red ray almost turned into a straight line. They were still flying over the sea. They passed by the surface of the sea, making the fish in the water quickly move away. Stop running. I think you know that you'll run out of energy in half a month. You're already converting your soul into energy. I just need you to help me with my research. It's not like the end of the world, you know, Anjali shouted. Anjali was getting impatient. He'd already spent a lot of time chasing the man. The power of time was important, but he still needed to go to the underground world, and he did not want to waste too much time. Why don't you just stop going after me? The man responded in a light voice. He did not want to waste energy on increasing his voice, but he made sure that Anjali could hear him. You're testing my patience. Anjali's brow furrowed. I wanted to work with you, and this could have ended peacefully. I'm changing my mind, but I'll give you one more chance. If you stop running and work with me, I'll still let this slid. I can swear on my ancestor's name. The man hesitated for a second after hearing those words. However, his body trembled after he thought of the scene the power of time showed him. He did not respond and continued to fly. Damn it. Now you're asking for it. Angeli lost his patience. However, the man made the right choice. Angeli was just lying to him. He just wanted to save some time and never cared about his ancestor. Angeli would dissect the man's dead body once the man stopped. He knew that he needed the information of power of time. The man was not an ancestor, and this made everything easier. The conversation ended here, and they started flying at full speed again. Half a month passed quickly. Angeli chased the man for a total of two months. The blue light had completely disappeared from the man's body. The light was replaced by something that looked like translucent water. It was the man's last resort. The power of a thousand-year-old soul. Angeli was still flying at full speed. It felt like that he had endless energy to use as the red light around his body was still intense. He's using the power of his soul. I need to find a way to slow him down. Angeli already tried many methods to slow the man down, but he dodged everything. It seemed like the power of time helped the man predict Angeli's movements. The traps Angeli created all did nothing. Angeli decided that he needed to capture the man no matter what happened after witnessing the power of time. Suddenly, the man charged into the water when Anjali was still thinking. Anjali followed after him and charged into the sea as well. It seemed like the man had a new direction. He was moving to the deep sea. It seemed like he found a way to survive. Anjali knew that something was happening, but there was nothing he could do. They reached the deep sea quickly and the man charged into a deep fissure. Anjali was still following him. Several minutes later, they reached the end of the fissure and saw a humongous bone altar. There was a floating ball above it. It seemed like the ball was the entrance to a different realm. Dimension tunnel? Why is there a dimension tunnel here? Angeli had a feeling that if he could not capture the man this time, he would never be able to find him. 
Also, the man was swimming to the dimension tunnel at full speed, and the energy waves he released were identical to the energy waves released by the merfolk. Who's there? The merfolk guarding the altar questioned. Translator, underscore Leo underscore editor, Karisu. Two groups of merfolk, whose body's bottom halves looked like fish tails, was moving to them from left and right. They were holding weapons in their hands. The guards noticed the presence of the two strangers and charged toward them right away with their weapons. This is a restricted area. Die. Inform the Avis Council, now. The tips of their weapons were coated with green glow. The spears they threw at Anjali and the man looked like arrows. The man's body twisted and suddenly disappeared into the air. He teleported away and dodged all the spears without any problem. He charged to the dimension tunnel without looking back. Chi. He entered the dimension tunnel without any problem. He was relieved and quickly checked the situation. Angeli used his dark red hair to block the spears from the merfolk. The hair went around the spears and threw them back to the merfolk. Several merfolk were pierced through by the spears and fell to the ground. Angeli was stopped by the spears for a second. His expression changed after he noticed that the man was already in the dimension tunnel. The man entered the tunnel, and Anjali followed right after him. Chi. Anjali fell into darkness several seconds later. He could feel that there was a terrifying power ahead. Crack. It almost sounded like his bones were cracking. On the other side of the dimension tunnel, under the clean water, groups of sea monsters gathered around a gray stone altar. The blue energy waves they released were connected to the dark hole in the sky. The dark hole was surrounded by sparking electric pulses. There were two sea monsters with the heads of snakes standing behind the other ones. Their bodies were chubby and their skin covered with wrinkles. Also, there were some golden marks on their foreheads. The marks looked like a certain type of symbols. How long can our energy support the tunnel? One of the sea monsters asked in the ancient universal language. Around 20 days. The dimension tunnel is stable and we have enough energy to support. If the situation allows, we can hold it for around 30 days. Also, based on the information Stan provided, the exit was safe, but we haven't received any new updates. I think he's having fun there. The creatures in the weak realms are like insects to him, but they are. Chi Chi. Some strange noise came from the tunnel when they were still chatting. What's that? Maybe there's a problem with the tunnel. The sea monsters looked at the dark hole. Chi. A ray of blue light charged out of the dark hole and turned to the right. It seemed like the ray wanted to leave the water. It was releasing the energy waves of the merfolk. The sea monsters did not realize what just happened. They thought it was their own people. Who's that? Is that a new sea monster that passed the Lord's test? A ray of red light appeared in the dark hole when the sea monsters were still guessing. It was a man surrounded by red light. The man also left the dark hole. Bam. The dark hole made some loud voice and the sea monsters' bodies trembled. There was blood spurting out of their eyes and ears. The strange smell of their blood permeated the whole area. The area under the water started shaking. The land was cracking and shaking as countless vortexes that varied in size appeared in the water. It almost felt like the place turned into a wholly different area. The two leaders were surprised by the man in red light and were still trying to figure out what happened. Bam. The man hit the black hole again. It felt like there was an invisible barrier stopping him from entering this realm. The situation finally woke up all the sea monsters. The tunnel. The tunnel is about to collapse. Something is off. The tunnel is not strong enough for him to pass through. What the hell is this creature? One of the leaders was surprised. There are only two possibilities. The other leader responded in a deep tone. It could be that the tunnel is damaged. However, there's a chance that the creature is too strong for the tunnel, and the realm power is trying to push it back. We're in big trouble no matter what the truth is. Fast. We need to gather all our power and make sure that he can't enter our realm. The sea monsters heard the voice and hesitated for a second. Wait. The tunnel is about to collapse. We need to stop this thing now. We can't let this thing enter our realm. The sea monsters released intense blue light, which flew into the tunnel. The light slowly stabilized the dark hole, and the realm power started pushing Anjali back again. Again? Do you really think you can stop me? A deep voice came from the dark hole. 
arrogant fools. After finishing these words, he released some eye-blinding red light. The red light was so strong that it almost looked like it came from the sun. The two leaders could barely keep their eyes open as they watched a black claw reaching out of the dark hole. However, the realm power was still trying to push it back. Suddenly, a hint of blue light flashed in the red light and moved toward the water. Anjali was not concerned. He changed the direction of the claw and tried to grab the blue light. A terrifying wave was released by the claw and the wave turned the water into a humongous water claw. The water claw was moving to the blue light at full speed. Chi. The blue light groaned as a human arm was cut off by the claw. Do you really think you can run? The red light roared and the whole dark hole started shaking again. Who? Who said that we should invade a weak realm? Tell me, where did this guy come from? This is not a weak being from a weak realm. I think he's much stronger than the beings in the strongest realms. Sea King, you must explain this to me. A deep but loud voice came from the water. Close the tunnel. Close the tunnel now. He's so strong that our realm is trying to push him out. If he enters our realm, it'll be a big problem. The water started boiling like crazy. Its temperature was increased to over 1,000 degrees Celsius within seconds. Some of the sea monsters were having trouble handling the heat, but they were still sending energy into the tunnel. W.O. An invisible force appeared in the sky and landed on the Black Claw. The Black Claw trembled under the force. The Black Claw started moving back into the hole slowly under the pressure. Angeli was getting anxious and he shouted, You'll not escape from me. I've already recorded the coordinates of this realm. You have nowhere to go. Boom. The dark hole exploded and the red light splashed everywhere. The sea monsters exploded into blood balls. The two leaders were also eliminated. The surface of the sea was covered with flesh and blood. A merfolk with three tails appeared on the sea, looking at the terrifying scene. The muscles on his face were twitching. Damn it, Sea King. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. It's a big problem now. He said that he had our coordinates. I should inform our priest now. His body trembled as he thought of the man's voice. The man almost broke through the tunnel under the realm power. The merfolk knew that he could not handle a problem like that. Collins, don't worry too much about. We still have a chance. A female merfolk with three tails walked to him and spoke in a deep tone. That man was going after the merfolk that was releasing blue light. If we can capture that merfolk and send it to the man, he might let us live. We can even establish a relationship with that strong being. He might be able to help the Empire. Are you sure about this? Yeah. The priest already informed us. The female merfolk nodded. Send the orders, then. Retrieve the recorded information and share the information with our kings. We need to make sure that we can find that blue light. Collins nodded and made the decision. Understood. The female merfolk agreed. Also, the priest said that the blue light had a stealth ability and we need to make sure that he's not hiding in our team. Vincent can handle the problem. We need to utilize our resources in the situation. Collins calmed down after he found a solution to the issue. You're correct. If we can establish a relationship with a strong being, it might be a chance for our empire. He was trying to figure out if they made the correct decision or not. Shadow Hunter Vincent, right? I'll send the orders now. The female merfolk nodded. Also, we needed to select a different dimension channel. I heard that there might be a strong ancient being in the wizard world. The strong being that visited our realm is an example, so we should stay away from the wizard world. You're right. We should find a different dimension channel. Sure. On the other side of the sea, there was an invisible shadow on the surface of the water. He just lost a right arm and was looking at the broken limbs that were floating in the water. You failed. Traitor. Even with the key, you still failed. A face of an old man appeared on his face. No, I didn't fail. Time will prove everything. Even if I'm eliminated, the man was muttering. Are you trying to find an inheritor? We'll all die if you can't find the inheritor in 21 hours and we'll be forgotten. The old man's brow furrowed. I respect the guidance of time and I've seen the future. I don't care if it's my destiny or not. I'll change my fate. Blue light appeared in the man's eyes. He glanced at the sea for one last time and disappeared into the air. It almost felt like he had never been here. Translator, underscore Leo, underscore editor, 
Karisu, the Wizard World, the Gem Sea. On the blue surface of the sea, a purple shadow slowly appeared in the air. P.A. Water splashed in the air as Anjali left the sea with a wet body. He stood on the water with a serious expression on his face. Merfolk of the West Coast had a way to open a dimension tunnel. I didn't expect that. Maybe the situation is more complicated than I thought. He blinked his eyes and thought for a while. Whatever, I need to go to the underground world. I can visit the school first and see if the Rio family is still doing well. I have many things to do. I shouldn't waste time. Red light flashed on his body and his body was quickly dried. He leaned to the side and started flying to his hometown. Several days later, in the afternoon, the harbor of the Andes Alliance. The pink sunlight illuminated the busy harbor. The workers quickly carried the goods off the ship and then loaded the new packages to the cabin. The leader of the workers was yelling at the workers while whipping the ground. There were some white umbrellas on the street beside the sea. There were nobles and merchants chatting under the umbrellas. The street lamps were lighted by energy particles. There were carriages under the light. There were also sailors, guards, and foreigners walking on the busy street. There were dozens of ships anchored in the harbor's shell-shaped bay, including luxurious private ships and fishing boats. Most of the private ships were owned by the merchants. It was the busiest time of the day in the harbor. A ray of red light suddenly appeared in the sky, arriving at the harbor within seconds and floating above the ships quietly. Several seconds later, the light faded away and a man appeared. Anjali was wearing a long purple robe as he was floating in the sky, overlooking the harbor below. The wind was blowing into his long robe, which was dancing in the sky. The people on the street raised their heads after they noticed that someone just appeared in the sky. The noble girls were yelling excitedly, but most of the people looked scared. The busy street suddenly quieted down. It felt like that someone pressed pause while watching a movie. They were all looking at the man in the sky. It's a wizard. I've only read about the wizards in novels. Oh, Lord. A real wizard. Suddenly, the people on the street started cheering and screaming in excitement. They were pointing at Anjali, and some of them even ran to Anjali while waving their hands. Angeli's brow furrowed, and the scorpion mark between his brow flashed. The people who pointed at him all groaned and fell to the ground. Their faces turned pale, and they could barely stand up. The people who were cheering were all frightened. They started running away, and there were children crying. Angeli wanted to calm them down, but he noticed that there were three white shadows that were moving to him in the sky. This is the harbor of Andy's Alliance. May I ask who you are and why you are here? Anjali was questioned by an old woman that was staring at him. There were also two men in white robes following the old woman. Their bodies were supported by an invisible force. Anjali glanced at them and quickly checked their power level. The old woman was a formal rank one wizard. The two men were rank two and rank three apprentices. Are you a wizard that guards this place? He asked. No, the old woman smiled. We were just passing by and noticed your presence. Your energy wave is so strong that it's hard to ignore. Do you want to meet the wizard that guards this place? From what I know, the Andes Alliance is not guarded by any wizard. There was a couple of rank three apprentices from the White Tooth Castle here. She tried to check Angeli's power level but failed and thus decided to approach the man politely. I left this place when I was young and traveled around the world for years. I want to visit my family. Angeli went straight to the point. He noticed that the two apprentices were having trouble staying in the sky. We can land on the ground and talk. Sure. They slowly landed on the empty street of the harbor. The mortals already escaped and hid in different places. Angeli could feel that there were people looking at him. He was not concerned. Angeli saw that there was a white horse with a chubby man on its back moving to them as they landed on the ground. The chubby man was sweating heavily. He fell to the ground and rolled to Angeli. Master, master, I'm an apprentice that works for the harbor. May I ask? Angeli repeated the word he just said to the old woman. The chubby man was excited. Master, did you say that you went to a wizard school from our harbor? May I ask your name? Name? I'm Angeli, Angeli Rio. The school I went to was called Ram Soda School. Angeli had no reason to hide his background and told them his name. He wanted to make sure that his name would help his family. 
The Rio family? You're from the Rio family. The chubby man recognized the name. Master Angeli. I know where the Rio family's territory is. I can take you there. Sure. Half an hour later, Angeli slowly stepped into the Rio family's mansion and saw a lot of Rio family's members. The family members were all on their knees. There were many children glancing at Angeli curiously. The couple in the front were wearing luxurious outfits. The man had a mustache and looked like the Baron. The woman was somewhat chubby. She looked a bit scared. Angeli walked to the couple. Do you recognize me? The couple was informed that a wizard from the Rio family returned and that it was a strong wizard. They raised their heads after they heard the question. Angeli, are you really that Angeli? The man asked carefully. He was the current family leader. His name was Vienna. Vienna did not want to offend a strong wizard. The family was in a tough situation, and if they messed up this reunion, this situation would get even worse. The whole country would blame them. Angeli glanced at the family members and scanned all of them using the biochip. Yeah. I don't think other people know about me, he responded in a light tone. Yeah. It. Just. According to the family history, Angeli left the family around 800 years ago and was the most honorable member in our family history. So, Vienna could not believe that someone could live for over 1,000 years. Angeli understood what Vienna was thinking right away. He explained that he had a special bloodline in his body which greatly increased his life expectancy. He did not care if they believed him or not. He walked around the mansion and asked about the family's history. Vienna told him that the book he sent back to the family was kept in a storage room as a souvenir. He asked Vienna to find the book and bring it back to him. Angeli tapped on the book slightly and the cover of the book started shining. A black scorpion mark appeared on the cover and the book opened. The family members were all surprised after witnessing the scene. They finally believed that he was the real Angeli. They kneeled in front of Angeli together. Master Angeli. It's the real Master Angeli. Our family has hope now. We have hope now. They cheered and talked in excitement. They surrounded Angeli and kneeled again. Welcome back to the family. Master Angeli. They shouted happily. Angeli glanced at them and shook his head. He was disappointed. None of the family members had the potential to become a wizard. Their bloodlines were extremely weak. Some of them reached the night level, but that was it. Without the biochip, Angeli would probably be the same. The family's bloodline had limitations, and the family members could only become knights. Summon all the elders, family leaders, and vice family leaders for me. I want to hold a family meeting in a week. I want to set up the rules and get everything organized, Angeli ordered. Yes, Master. Vienna was excited. He understood what Angeli was implying. If the rules of the family were made by a strong wizard that was around 100 years old or older, there was a chance that the family would become great again. Angeli was not concerned about what the family members were thinking. He raised his head and looked at the direction to the Rudin Empire. That was where the Rio family started. The news spread quickly. It was something that had never happened to the Andes Alliance. The wizard organizations in the area all heard about the news which surprised everyone. The news was spread by the signal towers. The wizard organizations decided to send their representatives to greet Angeli. If an apprentice failed to become a formal wizard, he would return to the family. It was common. The difference was that if Angeli Rio did not lie, he would be over 800 years old. That was the reason why the wizard organizations all treated this seriously. If a wizard could live for over 800 years, he had to be a strong wizard. There was barely any wizard that had such a long life expectancy in the wizard organizations. Some races were famous for their long life expectancy, but it was nearly impossible for any of them to live for over 800 years. Angeli Rio became famous in days after he came back to the Andes Alliance and everyone was talking about him. Some of the historians found the old records and confirmed that the Rio family did have a man named Angeli Rio 800 years ago. It was said that the man studied in the Ram Soda School and became a formal wizard. After the original Ram Soda School fell, Angeli Rio went to the Six Ring High Tower and traveled to the Central Continent. That was all they knew. The news also spread to the Ram Soda School, and the wizards in the school also got excited. 
They checked their records and confirmed that there was a student named Angeli Rio. Based on the general wizard rules, the older a wizard was, the stronger he would be. Angeli was over 800 years old, and no one knew how strong he could be. Translator, underscore Leo underscore editor, Karisu. Angeli was not concerned about the situation at all. Everything was going as planned. He stayed in the Rio family's territory. The family prepared a special house for him. Several days later, the wizards and apprentices in the area all visited the Rio family. There were many luxurious carriages entering and leaving Angeli's house. The situation lasted for several days, and the Rio family's branches finally arrived at the harbor. Angeli held the family meeting in the harbor's meeting hall. The four family branches were living in different areas. There were still family members that were heading to the harbor, but they needed more than one week on the road. Angeli did not want to waste his time. He only needed to meet the main members of the family. All right, we should start since everyone's here. Angeli sat in front of the meeting hall and he looked at the main members of the family. There were two old men on his left. They looked identical. Angeli assumed that they were twins. There were a middle-aged man and a middle-aged woman on the right. They were cousins, but their last name was still Rio. Angeli glanced at the members, and they all showed their respect by lowering their heads. Based on the family history, you're the 11th and 12th generations. Many years ago, my teacher, Adolf, helped our family. I tried my best to find the inheritors of Adolf, but I didn't get any valuable information. Do you know anything about his family? The hall remained silent for a while after Angeli finished his words. The oldest family member named Carl finally stepped forward. Master, Adolf's family has already disappeared due to some subjective reasons. Huh? What do you mean? Angeli's expression turned serious. Subjective reasons? Like what? Cold sweat appeared on Carl's forehead, and he quickly responded, Based on the records, the members of Adolf's family had low fertility rate. I heard that it was a common problem to the wizards, he explained. Angeli realized why the family only had night-level members. If his child was the only inheritor of the family, the family would not survive for too long. His child might have a good talent level, but he doubted if the Rio family could survive with the low fertility rate. Carl glanced at Angeli's face. He barely knew anything about the man named Angeli. He only heard rumors about him and had no idea as to what the personality of the man was. Carl was trying to figure out how to respond to Angeli's questions without offending him. Carl checked the other family members. Vienna was standing behind Angeli with a serious expression. The other important family members were just standing there and trying to figure out what they needed to do. Some of them had not contacted the main family members in years. Without Angeli, they would never come back to the harbor. Also, some of them did not know that they were from the same family. Without the family records, no one would know what their position was in the family. Master, I wonder what your plan would be, Carl continued. Do you want to gather all the family members or build a system like the royals? What's the difference? Angeli was interested. If you gather all the family members, we can build a strong force. If you want to build a system like the royals, we may be able to start a new country. Carl lowered his voice as he spoke. The family members here all wanted to accomplish something great with Angeli. A country? Angeli rubbed his chin. His face was covered by a mask so the family members could only see his eyebrows. Angeli used most of his extra energy recently, so the mark left by the ancestor had returned to his back and his body looked like the body of a normal human being. When he was trying to push back the realm power, he had to consume his bloodline power, and it stopped the mark from getting worse, otherwise he would not even be able to enter a normal portal. The bloodline of the scorpion woman was weakened, so he could only travel by flying at a relatively low speed. If he wanted to start a country, he needed a better way to travel. Angeli did not want to spend too much time on the Rio family. He thought for a while and responded, There's no point in starting a country. Master, you don't need to do everything by yourself. You can just hire knight-level masters. I'm sure even the Grand Knights would work for you. With a strong army, it's easy to start our own country. We can start a country in the Andes Alliance. I'm sure that the Alliance would give us a territory. Vienna opened his mouth. 
It seemed like he already considered everything carefully. Anjali nodded slowly. You're right. It'll be easier if I do that. Yeah. Based on my knowledge, the Council of the Alliance is sending a team to the harbor and Prince Victoria will be honoring you with a king's badge and a crown, Vienna added. It means that the Alliance will support your decision. Is that so? Anjali smiled. It would be a waste of time if he decided to start a country, but it was probably the best chance for the Rio family. That was the reason why he hesitated. All right, let's talk about something else and wait for the Alliance's team to arrive. I'll be staying in the family for a while before leaving. The place got noisy after Anjali finished his words. It seemed like the family members were worried. Wait, you're leaving? Master, I thought you were here to spend the rest of your life here. Anjali raised his hand and stopped them from talking. Tell me about your situation first. I need more information. They calmed down started explaining the situation of the family branches and the power balance of the major families. It took him three days to figure out everything. Meanwhile, several more family members arrived at the harbor. They also joined the family meeting. The Rio family had a glorious time in history. However, most of the family members were merchants. They were barely any apprentices or knights in the family. After Anjali left the family, there were many knights in the family, but there was no apprentice. Currently, there were three top-level knights in the family. They survived many wars and knew how to battle. There were 12 teenagers in the family that had the potential to become knights. There were also hundreds of young men in the family. Most of them decided to become merchants, and some of them wanted to work for the government. The elders and the old family members were handling the family branches. Three of the important family members were knights. They were the leaders of three family branches. Vienna and a middle-aged woman became family leaders without a knight certificate, but they knew how to handle things. They were famous in the family and had saved it from danger many times. The Rio family size was similar to the size of a baron's family in the alliance. The problem was that the branches of the Rio family were not in the same location. The Rio family did business in the sea. They were good at trading with the merchants from other countries. Angeli spent several days on organizing the information he collected. He made a ranking list for the family and decided who should be the ones in power. The family ships were made into a team, and he decided which family members would benefit more from the business. Angeli was not interested in the family sales channel and how they did business. He just needed to make sure that the family had no financial problems. The representatives of the council arrived at the harbor after everything was done. Bam, bam, bam. Red fireworks exploded in the sky. They looked like three red dandelions, and there were red light dots falling down. The harbor was decorated with many welcome messages, and the streets were thoroughly cleaned. The morning sunlight illuminated the streets, and there was no dirt at all. A team was moving on the streets slowly, heading to the meeting hall of the governor. The leader of the team was a beautiful girl in a white dress. The girl was around 13 years old and her blonde hair trailed over her shoulders. The girl had clean skin and her eyes looked like sapphires. Also, she was reading a silver leather scroll with a serious expression on her face. She was acting like an adult. Comparing to the girl, the old man in the silver crown that was sitting next to her looked kind. Victoria, Victoria, the Rose War shall never be forgotten. All hail Prince Victoria. Bring us the glory. The best prince in history. There were people singing and shouting on both sides of the street. Some of the people painted blue roses on their cheeks, all excited. Chapter 617. Family. 4. Translator. Underscore Leo underscore editor. Carisu. The silver carriages were advancing slowly. The prince was sitting in one of them. The girl put down the leather scroll and looked at the meeting hall, which looked like a white eyeball under the sunlight. Prince, the information on the scroll is too general. We can't verify anything. We gave up the chance to visit Saladin to come here. I don't want to waste my time on a potential lie. Prince Victoria waved at the crowd and responded with a smile on his face. That's why the king sent us here. We need to check if it's a lie or not. The crown and the document are just excuses. If the man was telling the truth, it would only benefit the alliance. That's why my father decided to contact all the important members. It sounded like the girl was talking to herself. Why do you bring me here then? 
There are hundreds of people to replace me. You're aware what you're up to. You might have a chance here. The prince patted the girl's hand. Katerina, it's impossible for you to decline the offers from the masters of the White Tooth Castle. We need to find someone strong that can help us. Don't worry about it. I'll accept my destiny, Princess Katerina responded. I don't care if I'll become a lab material or a fertility tool. I was born with this strange body. There's nothing else I can do. You're lucky when compared to Anthony. At least, this one is a male wizard. The prince sighed. Anthony, Katerina remained silent after hearing the name. Anthony was a young prince that was sent to the White Tooth Castle. He was sent to a female wizard who was a famous abusive pedophile, and no one knew what happened to him. The royal family had no way to decline a wizard's request. The good thing was that the wizards did not send these requests often. Katerina and Anthony faced the same problem. She had a special bloodline in her body, and the wizards of White Tooth Castle wanted to study her body. However, another wizard organization named Eye of Beaver also showed such interest. They were famous for its research ability. White Tooth Castle wanted to sell the girl to Eye of Beaver. They were treating the girl like an item. Katerina did not want to be treated like that, so the prince decided to help her. They visited many people, but no one wanted to become the enemy of the White Tooth Castle. They decided to visit Anjali because it seemed like Anjali was a legendary wizard. He was their last hope. The carriages slowly stopped by the meeting hall. Two Rio family's members came out of the hall and greeted them. Welcome, Prince Victoria. The master wants to see you, but you only have ten minutes. The master has many visitors, sorry, one of the family members spoke in a low voice. Victoria nodded. May I bring my sister with me? I think you know what's going on with my sister, right? Blaine was the only female family leader, and she had a general idea of Princess Katerina's situation. However, she could not make the decision by herself. She did not want to offend Angeli in any way. She remained silent for a while after hearing the request. I'm sorry. The prince had a bitter smile on his face, and it seemed like he had something else to say. P.A. He suddenly stepped on the stairs and picked Katerina up. They went around the two family leaders and charged into the door. How dare you? Stop them. Weapons were drawn and three people charged to the prince and the princess, followed by several guards. The prince lowered his body and dodged the swords. He stood in the center of the meeting hall and stopped moving right away. Chi chi chi. They were surrounded by the guards with different weapons in their hands. They would attack the prince and the princess if anything happened. The prince remained calm. He just stood there and faced the weapons. Sorry, Master Angeli. I had to do this. This might not be the best method, but I needed to do whatever I can to help my sister. He was speaking calmly and there was a blank expression on his face, but the guards around them were breathing heavily. Princess Katerina was surprised by what the prince just did. She did not expect something like this would happen. They were strangers to Angeli, who could be a legendary wizard. However, she knew that it was the only way for her to meet the wizard. She was anxious and already lost her calm. Katerina raised her head and looked at the man in a long purple robe sitting in their front. The man's face was covered by a mask, but it seemed like he was young based on the look of his skin. He had a pair of beautiful eyes and it felt like his eyes were prettier than those of the most attractive princess in the palace. There was dedication in the man's eyes, but she felt like that she was staring into the abyss. Is that so? Is that why you decided to break the rules? Angeli questioned in a light tone. You're an important member of the Alliance, but rules are rules. He was speaking in a calm tone, but it felt like he could attack the prince at any time. The atmosphere got heavy in the hall when Angeli finished his words. The people in the hall all trembled. Prince Victoria remained calm. I have no intention to offend you in any way, Master Angeli, but my sister has a special bloodline in her body and she might help your research. Also, Katerina respects you a lot. I hope you can take her in. Although it was not shown on his face, inwardly, he was anxious as hell. Before he could finish his words, the prince's sight blurred and his bones were broken. He was hit by an incredibly powerful force that was coming from the right. Bam. The prince hit the wall on the left kicking up dust everywhere. Blood was spurting out of his mouth, turning his white robe red. Chi. The prince's right arm was pulled off by an invisible force. 
Boom. The arm broke into pieces and the flesh splashed on the white blanket. The whole meeting hall was silent. Vienna, Blaine, the guards, and the other family members were all surprised. They did not expect Angeli to attack the prince like he was his biggest enemy. Angeli sat in the chair and glanced at the injured prince. This is a small punishment for ignoring my rules. My rules must be followed. Angeli would have killed the prince if he was in the nightmare realm, but he did not want it to become a problem to the Rio family. The prince landed on the floor after hitting the wall. Katerina ran to him and helped him lie down while crying. She tried her best to hold her voice down as she crouched by the prince. The atmosphere in the hall was extremely heavy. Angeli did not care about the others. He just looked at the princess. Your brother lost an arm for you, so I'll check your condition. Come to me. Katerina was still crying by the prince's side. It felt like she did not hear those words. The prince grabbed Katerina's hand. Go. He spat out the word. Katerina held his hand tight with a face that was covered with tears. Go, I'll go. So, please don't do something like this again. She released the prince's hand and slowly stood up. She walked to Angeli slowly and stopped when she was about one meter away from him. Huh. Angeli thought it would be a waste of time, but his expression changed gradually as Katerina moved toward him. There were blue light dots flashing in front of his eyes. Your hair grows fast and you'll feel cold from time to time, right? He suddenly asked. Katerina stopped crying and nodded slightly. Angeli was excited. He could almost confirm that the bloodline in the girl's body was one of the 36 special bloodlines. However, he still scanned the girl using the biochip. Scan completed, analyzing the data. Completed. The target has a special bloodline. It's one of the 36 special bloodlines called Tersi. Data of bloodline Tersi. It takes 25 years for the bloodline to mature. Special effect. The virgin blood of the target will increase the damage of an offensive magic device greatly. He confirmed his assumption. Walk to me, girl, closer. A gentle smile suddenly appeared on Angeli's face. I want to see you closely. Katerina's body trembled as the smile appeared on Angeli's face. Katerina, the prince, and the other family members' bodies all trembled. They looked at Angeli like looking at a psychopath. Angeli almost killed the prince, yet his attitude suddenly changed completely. That was the reason why they were all surprised. Katerina knew that she could not say no say, so she moved closer to Angeli. Angeli grabbed her hand and used his hair to stab into the girl's wrist. The hair started sucking her blood like an insect. Katerina was scared, but she did not move an inch. Angeli's expression loosened as the hair sucked her blood. He also tried to stab the girl's forehead using the hair. Ding. After the noise, a blue eagle mark appeared on Katerina's forehead. A ray of blue light was released by the mark and the light turned into an old wizard in a white robe. Who are you? With all due respect, Katerina will be transferred to the White Tooth Castle soon. I don't care which organization you're from, please follow the rules of the Wizard Alliance, the old wizard said. This girl is a student of my student. How dare you? You can't take her away from me based on the rules of the Wizard Alliance. I'm a kind man, so I'll let this one slid. All right, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Angeli finished those words and destroyed the old wizard's hologram using a string of red light. He found a random excuse to ignore the rules. He had no interest in such a boring matter. Angeli still had a lot of things to take care of, and Katerina just made things more complicated. His magic devices were all destroyed, and it was not a good idea for wizards to fight with the true form. He was not in the nightmare realm, and the realm power of the wizard world would not help him. With a valid magic device, he could easily handle daily encounters. The two magic devices he lost during the fight against an ancestor helped him survive the battle. Angeli collected a lot of rare materials in the maze and was already designing an extremely strong magic device. The magic device could reach the power level of a rank 7 wizard, and the device could help him focus his force. The power of a rank 7 wizard was not really attractive to Angeli, but the girl's bloodline might be extremely helpful. The bloodline would increase the power of the magic device greatly. The bloodline of the girl gave Angeli some new ideas, and with the data he had in the biochip, he had the chance to create one of the most powerful magic devices in the history. Translator 
underscore Leo underscore editor, Carisu. The hall was deadly silent. The only noise was made by people swallowing. When the wizard from the White Tooth Castle appeared, they thought that Angeli would at least negotiate with them. However, the outcome was completely unexpected. Angeli destroyed the hologram without letting the wizard finishing his words. Vienna lowered his head and swallowed. He was concerned about what Angeli just did. Master, the White Tooth Castle. Angeli did not say anything, but he glared at Vienna. He stopped Vienna from saying anything else. He lowered his head and looked at Princess Katerina again. Hey, how old are you? He asked. Don't worry. I can help the prince grow his arm back. It's not a big problem. Katerina was still crying, but she stopped after hearing those words. Are you? Are you serious? Of course. I never lie. Angeli smiled. I never lie when it's unnecessary, he added in mind. Katerina wiped the tears off her face. I'm 19 years old. She was trying her best to stay calm, but the terrifying scene was still replaying in her mind. The girl knew that wizards were usually unstable. Their emotions changed constantly. 19 years old, Angeli's brow furrowed. Six more years. All right, you can stay in the harbor. Don't go anywhere. Someone, find the princess a place to stay. Sure. Two guards stepped forward. One of them helped the prince to stand up and the other one went to help the princess. They left the meeting hall quickly. Angeli finished everything and healed the prince's wound. The family was rebuilt and the family leaders could take care of the rest for him. He decided to let Vienna handle things and be the host of the meetings. He then decided to return to the house and have some rest. He was sent back to the house by six white carriages. He did not waste any time on the road. Angeli took off the long robe and hung it on a clothing stand. He was wearing a white shirt and a pair of dark pants inside the robe with a silver scimitar on his belt. There was also a black mirror on his belt. Master, you're back. Two maids crouched and helped him take off his boots. I want to take a bath. Have you cleaned the pool? Angeli felt that his body was a bit strange. He could clean his body using spells, but taking a bath could help him relax. The pool is cleaned and filled up. You can use it when you want, the maids responded politely. Angeli nodded and passed through the living room. He passed the spiral staircase and entered the backyard. In the center of a garden, there was a white swimming pool filled with light blue water. The edges of the pool were frozen. The place was quiet and cold. Angeli took off his clothes and jumped into the pool. The chilling water was at his chest, Angeli inhaled deeply due to the coldness. He stayed by the edge of the pool, raised his head, and narrowed his eyes. Special soft water at negative 41 degrees Celsius, he scooped up some water using both hands and released it into the pool. He glanced at the maids and shook his head. They were standing as far as they could from Angeli. I didn't notice that the mortals can't even approach me now. Angeli opened his mouth and released some yellow smoke that smelled sulfurous. His teeth were sharp like crocodiles. He just kept the position and looked at the sky. The white clouds were moving slowly in the wind. There were white birds flying over the sky, twittering. Angeli could feel that the chilling water was cooling his body down. He stayed by the edge of the pool quietly and leaned against the wall. He closed his eyes and somehow fell asleep slowly. He woke up after a while. He had no idea how long had passed. Angeli opened his eyes and saw the two full moons that looked like two irregular plates in the sky. The stars looked like broken pieces of diamond that covered the sky. The owls were making noises and he could hear the insects in the bushes. Angeli yawned, but he did not want to get up. He opened his arms and put them on the edge of the pool. Suddenly, he felt that his right hand was itchy. He looked at his right hand and saw a red insect moving out of a small crack on the ground. Angeli's arm blocked its path and it was trying to climb up his arm. The insect looked like a centipede. It had a red body with a hard shell, but the insect's tail was different. The tail looked like a pair of scissors and it seemed like it was poisonous. Angeli grabbed the insect and put it on his hand. He started observing the insect carefully. It's not afraid of my energy wave. You little thing. Angeli knew that his energy wave was terrifying due to his bloodline power and normal creatures would not even get close to him. 
If he released his energy waves like normal, creatures weaker than rank four wizards would not even be able to look at him directly. Although he was not releasing his energy waves like normal, weak creatures like insects and rats could still feel the terrifying power in his body. However, it seemed like this red insect was not afraid of him at all. Is it just a coincidence? Or am I changing? Angeli played with the insect for a while and threw it away. He started checking the tiny crack on the ground and found a black insect that was moving by slowly. Something happened to me. He stood up from the pool with a naked body. A maid that was dying in the cold walked to him and tried to put a white blanket on his body. Don't worry about it. You can leave. This place is not for you. Angeli could barely do anything for these mortals. They were like fragile glass bottles and their bodies might be permanently damaged by the radiation energy. If they stayed too close to Angeli, they would get sick or die. A maid stayed around Angeli for about 10 minutes and died for no reason after she returned to her home. Angeli checked the dead body and ordered the maids to stay away from him. He walked back to the meeting hall. Angeli was surprised as he entered the door. He looked at the scene in the meeting hall with his brow furrowed. The meeting hall was brightened up by lighted candles and there were more than 10 young girls standing there. It seemed like they were around 13 years old. They were staring at Anjali anxiously. The girls were wearing dresses and some of them were wearing leather armor. What's going on? Anjali questioned in a deep tone. Who sent you here? He noticed that the girls all had balanced bodies and pretty faces. Also, they were releasing strong life energy waves. The girls all had the potential to become knights and could handle the radiation energy released by Anjali's body. Master, a girl wearing tight silver armor stepped forward. We are the members of the Rio family. Here's a letter from the family leader. She handed a black leather scroll to Anjali. Anjali grabbed the letter and his brow furrowed again. Dear Great Master Anjali, I hope that you can forgive my rudeness. Here are 13 selected girls from the family. I sent them to you so they can take care of your daily life. Also, when you are in the mood, you could have some fun with them. There were paragraphs of worthless text in the letter. Anjali knew what he was implying. The girls were here for Anjali. It was important for the family to have pure bloodline if they wanted to start a country. The family leaders selected the girls to reproduce with Anjali. They wanted as many children as they could get. Although wizards had low fertility rate, they could still impregnate mortals. The chance was low, but there was still a chance. It would be enough if even just one of the girl was impregnated. Anjali was a bit speechless. He could have some fun with them if the girls were not from his family. He looked at the girls, and the girls were like his granddaughters or something. If he had sexual intercourse with them, he would just feel strange. It was common for a family with wizards to do something like this. All the big families wanted pure bloodline. The theory was wildly recognized by the wizards. That was the reason why the family leader selected all the girls from the family. So... You were sent here by Vienna? What's your name? Angeli questioned. Diana. Diana Grim Rio. The girl responded immediately. Please don't worry. We'll take care of you and we'll follow all your requests. The girl was only 19 years old. She was shy when speaking these words. She lowered her head and stood in front of Angeli. Her face blushed and she was nervous. All right, Diana. You can pick a room you want and stay in the house. I'm busy right now. The rest of you should do the same. Angeli dropped the letter, and the letter was ignited in the air. The letter was burnt into ashes, which flew to the garbage bin. He did not say anything else and just headed to the spiral staircase. The girls in the meeting hall witnessed the mysterious scene and were excited. Diana was close to Angeli when he did the trick. She heard that the wizards were mysterious and strong. Angeli proved it to her. Most of the girls here volunteered when the family leader told them about his plan. It was a great opportunity for them. If they could give birth to a wizard's child, their lives would change completely. Diana was one of them. Her mother told her many things about the situation. They all knew that the Rio family was finally an important family in the Alliance after Angeli came back. Translator, underscore Leo, underscore editor, Carissu. Angeli did not expect the Rio family to do that, but it was a common thing here, so he did not decline the offer. If he could not bring the family a child with pure bloodline, 
the family would always be worried about the future. He entered the bedroom and kept the room dark. He asked the two maids to leave the room and lay down on the bed. Angeli fell asleep several seconds later. Angeli had no idea how long had passed, but he could felt something wet and warm around his hand after he woke. He could also hear that there was a girl saying something by the side. He opened his eyes and saw two naked girls on his bed. One of the girls was dragging his hand to her private area. Although there was no light in the room, Angeli had no problem seeing the girls' bodies. Diana, right? And? Alice, my name is Alice. The other girl spoke out loud. Angeli had not touched a woman in a while and grabbed the two girls' arms. Aren't you afraid of me? He was a bit interested. We're not scared. You're the greatest being in our family. There's no point for us to feel scared. Diana responded. All right then, if we're lucky, there's a chance that I can leave a child to the Rio family. Angeli took off his clothes and his hands started moving on Diana's body. They spent the whole night on reproducing. Diana and Alice were so tired that they could barely move after everything was done. Angeli asked two maids to help them get back to their own rooms. Although they could handle radiation energy, it would still be dangerous if they stayed around Angeli for too long. This was just a start. There would be at least two girls in his room during the night in the following days. They knew that Angeli had important things to take care of during the daytime. Angeli had never spent so much time on intercourse. In the next 20 days, he had sex with each of the 13 girls at least three times. Angeli did want to have at least one child for both the Rio family and the Fenrir family. He wanted to keep his promises. Sadly, he was way too strong, and his body was controlling his energy movement naturally. The chance was extremely low, and Angeli could only hope that maybe it would work this time. He could not stay in the harbor forever. Angeli gathered the family leaders and asked them to take care of the book for him. He also made sure that the family leaders understood how dangerous the book was. Only the family members who had the Rio family's bloodline could open the book. The wizards who wanted to steal the information would be tortured by illusions, poisons, and explosions. Also, if a family member viewed the book, a contract would automatically be signed and the family member would not be able to leak any information related to the book. After everything was done, he asked the guards to spread rumors on the street. He wanted to make sure that White Tooth Castle understood the situation before leaving the harbor. Angeli headed to the Rudin Empire after everything was done and wanted to see how White Tooth Castle would react. He would not hand Katarina over to the White Tooth Castle for any reason. He doubted if White Tooth Castle could win a fight against him. He was certain that White Tooth Castle would try to communicate with him sooner or later. Angeli was a legendary wizard that lived for over 800 years and no organization would attack him just because of a girl. In the answer plane, the yellow grass was dancing in the air. The yellow grass looked like a large yellow blanket on the ground. The sky was covered by dark clouds and there was thunder rumbling. Chi, a red meteor flew over the plain, leaving a long red trail behind. The meteor was heading to the old Rudin Empire. About 10 minutes later, the meteor started landing. It was flying to the edge of the plain in front of which was a dark forest. The meteor stopped on an empty ground and revealed a man in a luxurious outfit after the light faded away. The man was wearing a long red robe and there was a silver scorpion pattern on his left chest. His long dark red hair trailed over his shoulders and he had a pale face. The man's eyes looked like two windows that led to a mysterious and unexplored world. The man's eyes were coated with a red glow and the man looked a bit strange. It was Angeli. He flew over the answer plane. He only spent some time on eating after he left the harbor. He reached the edge of the answer plane, and the forest ahead was owned by the old Rudin Empire. Angeli started thinking as he stood in front of the trees. He slowly stepped into the forest and advanced. Several minutes later, he found the place where he'd battled the two knights. He could still feel the emotion waves that he'd left in the area. The emotion waves should not be here, but with the refined true form he had, the emotion waves somehow came back to this place. As a rank 8 being, the energy waves or mentality waves he released could stay in a place forever. He could even retrieve the energy waves he'd released when he was weak. It was the power of the refined true form. 
Individuals with the power of a rank 8 wizard would affect time and dimension 1 at a certain rate. They could easily find the traces they left around the world. The stronger the refined true time was, the more the dimension would be affected. Angeli was affected by the waves released by the symbol of his true form. If he could find the secrets of the dimension and time, the symbol might turn into something like the mark of an ancestor. The changes done to the world could never be removed, and he would able to change the rules of nature. That was the reason why the realm power would push a strong being from another realm out. However, Angeli had no idea what the secret of time and dimension was. He collected some power of time and built a dimension model using the bloodline of the Scorpion Woman. However, his ability was far from the level of an ancestor. Angeli was getting closer to the ancestor level, and his symbol was changing. If he successfully became an ancestor, the traces he'd left around the world gather in a certain place and turn into the base of an ancestor. That was all Angeli knew. The secret of time and dimension was the foundation of an ancestor. An ancestor had a power level that was higher than a rank 8 wizard. Angeli was still studying the dimension. He had no idea how long it would take to finish the study. Angeli walked around the area and rubbed the surface of the trees. Although he knew that everything had changed and he could not find the same trees as in his memory, he was still satisfied with the result. He left the forest and started flying again. Several hours later, Angeli arrived at an abandoned ruin. The ruin was a pile of gray stones. It felt like there had been a large building here. Angeli sighed with mixed emotions as he checked the ruin. It was the castle of the Rio family. Hundreds of years passed and the place already turned into a ruin. Angeli still remembered the days he'd spent in the castle. He went around the castle and found several graves with tombstones on top of them. There were three graves and three black tombstones. They were covered with grass and herbs. Angeli walked to one of the tombstones and crouched. He cleaned the moss on the tomb and found several words. To my best friend, Otis. He checked the other two tombstones, and the names were Chris and Lisa. They were all Baron's friends. Father came back and buried them here. Angeli remembered that he'd asked the soldiers to cut their heads off and hang them at the gate, but it seemed like the Baron still buried them after that. The sky was dark and rain started pouring down like crazy. Angeli stood in front of the graves quietly. The raindrops evaporated before they could touch his body. They also splashed on the tombstones. The only noise in the forest was made by the rain. He returned to his hometown. The graves reminded him of Odessa's muscular body. Odessa's body was so strong that he'd almost looked like a bear. The land under his feet was familiar, but unfamiliar at the same time. He knew all the insects and herbs in the forest. He collected all the information when he was young. It was still stored in the database. Angeli left the castle and went over the border, entering the Saladin Empire. Saladin Empire was led by the inheritors of the elves and their territory almost tripled. They took over the old Rudin Empire and several other countries around. The new king of Saladin Empire was backed up by the Merefolk and called himself the King of Sea Elves. The war was the reason why the Rio family was driven away from their hometown. Saladin Empire had endless forests and a long coastline. That was the reason why they cooperated with Merefolk. Angeli was heading to the largest city of Saladin Empire, Karen City. Karen City was close to the sea and a bit far from the old Rudin Empire. Angeli asked the travelers he met for directions, and he barely wasted any time on the road. He quickly arrived at the dark forest by the Karen City. Chapter 620 Confidence 1. Translator Underscore Leo Underscore Editor Carissu Saladin Empire Karen City In the center of the dark forest, there was a white city standing quietly. The people and carriages on the streets looked like ants. There were also humongous flying mounts leaving the parking lot. The flying mounts all had white wooden ships attached to their backs. Chi. A ray of red light suddenly appeared in the sky, then floated above the city, revealing a man in a purple robe inside. Angeli overlooked the city, and the flying mounts caught his attention. The flying mounts were pulling large airships like horses pulling carriages. The closest airship was around 100 meters away from him, and he could see the passengers in luxurious outfits. The passengers were looking at Angeli surprised. 
Angeli looked at the airship and the passengers started screaming. No energy movement at all. The flying mounts are the only thing doing the work. Not bad. Chi Chi. Two rays of green light left the Karen city and flew to Angeli. The two stopped in front of Angeli. They were a male and a female. We apologize that we didn't know you would visit the city, master. The man opened his mouth. My name is Ning. I'm a wizard that guards the city. May I ask what your name is? Angeli's sight fell upon the man. The man, who had messy red hair, was wearing golden armor. The armor was a bit loose and there was a wine bottle in his hand. The man looked like a drunkard, but there was a serious expression on his face. Angeli did not respond. He looked at the other person. She was a slim, green-haired woman with sharp ears, wearing tight leather armor. It almost looked like the woman was a hunter in the forest. The woman opened her mouth as well after she noticed that Angeli was looking at her. My name is Taryn. I'm a wizard from the Sea Elf Alliance. I assume you're the wizard who just returned to the Andes Alliance. The woman's brow furrowed. She checked the red light around Angeli's body and noticed how high the temperature was. Her expression quickly changed. Angeli smiled. You're correct. I'm the wizard who just returned to the Andes Alliance. I was born in the Rudin Empire. I'm here because I want to discuss the problem with my family's territory with you. Family territory? The two wizards had a bad feeling about this. Angeli continued, I'm from the Rio family and we want to start a country in our hometown. I'm here to reclaim my territory since the Rudin Empire is under Saladin's control. I understand what you're talking about. It's a large territory, so you must pay us. The female elf's brow furrowed. No, I'm not here to trade with you. I'm just here to inform you about my plan. I'll reclaim my territory and my plans won't change. The smile disappeared from Angeli's face. The two wizards were surprised. They finally understood Angeli's intentions. They looked at Angeli like looking at a fool. Master, are you sure you're all right? The male wizard pointed at his own head and mocked. He took out a golden dagger surrounded by three red light balls. Angeli did not want to waste time. He pointed at the two wizards and released two rays of red light. The red light turned into two red lion heads in the air, and their temperature was increasing rapidly. The red lion head broke through the male wizard's barriers without any problem and destroyed a red shadow released by him. Chi. The lion head landed on Ning's body. W.O. The lion head exploded. The battle ended in a second. Ning was turned into a ball of flames and his body was burned to ashes. The other lion head was blocked by the female elf's golden rope. The lion head was having trouble moving forward. The golden rope started turning black quickly. It seemed like it could break at any time. The female wizard was surprised that Ning was killed within seconds. She turned around and started flying to the gem sea. She rolled in the air and turned into a blue snake with wings. The woman traveled several hundred meters in the air within seconds, but Angeli pointed at the woman, releasing another red ray, and the woman was slowed down. She was caught up with by the red ray, and the red light wrapped around the woman without hurting her. A rank one wizard. How arrogant can you be? Angeli barely did anything during the battle. He flew to the female elf quickly. What are you going to do? The female elf shouted. Do you know who my teacher is? A merfolk wizard named Blue Moon. If she figures out what you just did, she'll. Do you really think I'll be concerned? Angeli shook his head. You survived my attack because of that strange golden robe. Angeli looked at the golden rope. The golden rope was still blocking the lion head. He raised his hand, and the red lion head returned to his body. The golden rope was almost burnt black and Angeli moved it to him using energy particles. What's this? The female wizard did not want to answer, but she quickly responded after the red light around her body became intense. The light of sight. That's the light of sight from the legendary sea beast Gran. Light of sight. Angeli was interested. Yeah, Gran was a legendary beast from the merfolk tales. They say that Gran had a pair of special eyes that could release energy waves. Gran would stare at its enemies, and its targets would be attacked by the energy waves. Someone collected these energy waves and made them into magic devices. This one was built by my teacher. It's just a magic item. The wizard stopped for a second and continued. We use it to bind enemies. 
This golden rope is relatively weak. Angeli played with the golden rope with his fingers. A legendary sea beast. The people in Karen City all witnessed the battle. They saw that one of their wizards was killed and the other one captured. Everyone in the city started panicking. Teams of city guards moved out of the city and quickly entered a certain formation. They put up silver shields and the archers all aimed at Angeli with their bows. Angeli could hear the noise made by the bowstrings. The king of Saladin put on a golden armor and left his palace quickly, protected by many grand knights. He was looking at the sky. The king waved his hands and calmed the soldiers down. He asked his generals about the situation. It seemed like he was trying to figure out a plan. Angeli lowered his head and saw a sea of silver shields. He was not concerned at all. Raising his right hand, he pointed at the shields. Bam! A large palm was created by the red light he released. The temperature of the palm was extremely high. It quickly landed on the shields. The palm slapped the shields like slapping tofu. The shields and the soldiers under the shields were crushed by the palm, turned into a mixture of metal and flesh. The buildings touched by the palm were also destroyed. The dust was splashing in the air and the soldiers were shouting in fear. The people in Karen City were all trying to escape through the gate. The nobles and the peasants were all running like crazy. Many people were killed during the chaos. The nice-looking city almost turned into hell. The female elf was terrified. Angeli's one strike easily killed two knights and thousands of elite soldiers. The elf could not believe what had just happened and she could barely think at the moment. The king and his generals were also surprised. However, he still drew his sword and tried to calm down the soldiers. The king looked at the purple shadow in the sky. He had no idea why the man attacked them without saying a world. Karen City was the center of Saladin and there were many merfolk wizards around. The soldiers were also terrified and confused at the same time. She. An arrow finally flew to Angeli, which sent a signal to other archers. Thousands of dark metal arrows were fired by the siege crossbows, all flying to the invader in the sky. The sea of arrows almost blocked the sunlight. The arrows landed on the purple shadow in the sky without any problem and made a loud noise as arrows hit each other. Strangely, none of the arrows was falling. They gathered together and turned into a humongous ball of arrows. Seconds later, the arrows started heating and turning red. There was white smoke rising from the surface of the arrow ball. The arrow ball was turning redder and redder. It was melting and there was liquid dropping to the ground. The arrow ball cracked and revealed the man in the center. Angeli stood in the center of the ball and waved his right hand. Some metal liquid spurted out of the arrow ball and started falling to the city. The people in the city saw the scene and started screaming in fear. However, the gate was so small that people were having trouble passing through it. Bam, 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 bam. The metal liquid landed on the corners of the city and the temperature in the city was increased to an unbelievable level. Following the metal liquid, several metal balls landed in the city. Countless people were killed and many buildings were burned. The whole city turned red.